probably wondering about the gloves and the scarf. Well, I'm wearing these because we're now in the heart of my favorite season, fall. And while around here we haven't had much in the way of fall, more of a day-to-day -day fluctuation between summer and winter, but there has been a couple of genuine fall days in there. Speaking of fall, I hope all of you remembered to turn back your clocks this week. For those of you watching this from outside the US, our daylight saving time goes until the first week of freaking November now. You know, I was gonna talk to you today about the joys of my favorite season, but I have this internet soapbox anyway, and this annoys me so much. So instead, I'm gonna talk to you about DST and why I think it's stupid. But first, let's look at the history of daylight savings time. It was first proposed by a New Zealander by the name of G.V. Hutton, but the real credit for the idea usually goes to the man who actually went out and did something about it, the Englishman William Willett. The basis of the proposal is to move the sunset back to give people a longer afternoon in order to participate in outdoor leisure, such as picnicking and sports. I don't know about you, but where I grew up was far enough north and far enough west in the time zone that in the long days of summer, the sun didn't go down until after 10.30 in standard time, so push that back another hour, and that's not till 11.30. In my experience, people who are up after 11 will do so light or dark, and those that go to sleep before that point will do so sun or not. But that was just the original idea for the purpose of daylight saving. It is not, as I've heard some people think, to help farmers. In fact, the farming community was the largest voice against DST when it was first proposed because it screwed with their schedules more than most others at the time. Getting away from the original idea, however, let's look at the main reason given in the modern day for the time shift, to save energy. Energy conservation, at least in the US, is such a primary role given to daylight saving time that an energy policy act actually added two weeks to either end of daylight saving time in 2007, adding an entire another month and why we just got out of it. Here's my problem with this idea. It's utter hokum. In researching, every report I could find that showed that DST conserved energy was actually later proven faulty. The main conceit behind the idea is that the later sun would mean less use of lights, which would then lead to less electricity use. In fact, Ben Franklin's original proposal related to, but not actually, daylight saving time was there to save French candle wax. It was a joking proposal that involved waking up the populace at dawn with cannon blasts, but apparently somebody took it seriously. The problem with this in our modern world is the change of the clock makes it so that the heat of the day is a time we're more active. Because of this, it leads to more use of the far more energy draining air conditioning. Also, the early rising leads to the use of heating from being up before the sun. So some studies have shown that DST actually costs more energy, not less. But let's get past that and look at some of the fringe disadvantages of daylight saving time. Many of the biggest ones come from the transition days. You see, there's one day in spring and one day in fall in which there's a day that is 23 hours long and a day that is 25 hours long, respectively. This screws with things that work on a 24-hour clock. One famous story comes from a German steelwork factory. You see, they had their mold set to a timed radio transmission that would tell it when the steel had cooled enough to open. One year during the spring forward, the radio transmission went off at the right time, but it was an hour earlier. So the mold opened an hour early, releasing molten steel onto the factory floor, causing massive amounts of damage. But this sort of thing is mechanical error. Mechanical error can be corrected with some extra programming to compensate for the discrepancy. What's harder to fix is the human factor. You see, we, too, run on a 24-hour clock. 
that messing with can cause serious problems. During the first week of DST, people sleep less because their circadian rhythms have been thrown a wrench. This leads to a greater number of car and workplace accidents on that first Monday. A 2008 study showed that male suicide rates increase the week after the spring transition due to the jarring effects on their natural sleep patterns. These health reasons have led to some nations abandoning the idea of daylight saving time. Actually, if we followed Willett's original proposal from 1902, he suggested that we change the clock 20 minutes every week, we wouldn't have these problems. But could you imagine anyone trying to pull that off? This brings us to the most obvious problem with DST, the changing of the clocks. People forget and find themselves to be an hour early or an hour late, depending on the season, for a day or two. This problem has been mitigated somewhat nowadays, as I'm probably the last person in the modern world who wears a watch and doesn't rely on a computer to change their clocks for them. Also, for anyone who has to deal with multiple time zones because they have work that crosses such boundaries, we'll have to keep in mind the DST rules for each individual region. This, of course, could be mitigated if the world could come together and make a decision about daylight saving time and when it starts and ends or even to use it at all, but some people really like DST for some reason, while others can follow logic, so the argument persists. But finally, my problem with daylight saving time is pure and simple. Thousands of years ago, we as a people decided that time would be based on the sun, and noon would be at the zenith. This has been true since First Kingdom Egypt. Also, as a former Boy Scout who would tell time by the sun, having not only to calculate for how far off the prime time of the time zone you are, but throwing in an extra hour is just annoying. This is far more jarring at night, but that's besides the point. Our time is based on the movement of the sun, but we push it off by an hour for silly reasons. Well. Anyway, that's what I've been thinking about when I should have been out enjoying my favorite season, but the weather has been giving it to me. <sighs> I'm gonna go shovel the snow off my Halloween decorations. releasing molten steel onto the factory floor, causing great deals of damage. Causing a great amount of damage. Great deals of damage. It dealt 1d20 damage to everything in the area. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I think molten steel would do more than that. Okay. Let's see 1d20. That's a shit ton of damage. Never mind. Alright. <laughs> Alright, it does 1d12 damage. More than that, 2d12. Yeah, it does 2d12. Isn't 2d12 more than 1d20? Anyway.